Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin, and we have reporters in El Paso at the border looking at what's going on there. We have a red link story up at Infowars.com. Border Patrol says cartels are using de facto amnesty to smuggle, quote, whatever they want, unquote, into the United States. And, of course, they're saying they don't know who or what is coming in. They said also that... Uh, they are using the massive influx of immigrants that's being driven by the uh, drug cartels to distract them. This is an amazing interview. We're going to play some of that interview for you. And we're also going to be going in the next segment live to El Paso to talk to Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. And there's some more information coming out of there. There's a... Uh, an article up on the Drudge Report about the Border Patrol agents are testing positive now for diseases that are being carried by immigrants. And those are things like TB, scabies, chicken pox. Well, in this interview with the uh, Border Patrol agents that are in the area, we have some new revelations about uh, disease and its transmission coming across the border and the CDC's reaction to it, which is really going to amaze you. But let's play a little bit of that report that's up now at Infowars.com. This is an interview with the vice president of the uh, Border Patrol Union in El Paso. Uh, my name is Stu Harris. I'm first vice president with Local 1929 of the National Border Patrol Council. Right now, the biggest concern, obviously, is, is this... Central American invasion that, that's happening right now uh, and not just the humanitarian aspect of it because what we know is that the cartels control the smuggling routes and it's the cartels that are pushing these people from Central America across the river instead of taking them to a port of entry where if they turn themselves into a port of entry the end result is going to be the same. So it's the cartels pushing these groups across the river to tie up our agents and meanwhile our agents are, are tied up processing, you know, feeding these, these people, changing diapers uh, and the drug cartels are, are running whatever or whoever they want across the border and other places and who or what is coming in, we don't know and we won't know until something bad happens and that right now is the biggest, the biggest concern that we have and this, this has to be addressed. We want to make sure they're not carrying any infectious diseases or, or contagious uh, diseases uh, so our agent, agents aren't put in harm's way unnecessarily. Um, once that's done, obviously, you know, medical evaluation if they need it. If they're asking for any kind of medical assistance, uh, we'll provide what we can there. Um, and then they're taken to a, a processing center where they either wait to be processed or they're sent to uh, El Paso or Tucson. Uh, and they're, they're run through the system, fingerprints, all nine yards, um, they're issued a packet, they're given a notice to appear before a judge, and they're released. You know, a, a lot of what we're hearing in, in the media and, and other places is that, uh, you know, the conditions in Central America, economic, are, they're just horrible conditions. There's violence, there's gang violence, and that's true. And, and you know, that, that's a, a, a terrible, terrible way to have to live. But that's been going on for more than 10 years. Okay, so for this invasion to start suddenly happening, something else had to change. And what changed was the fact that we were engaging in this catch and release program. And word spread. I think fast. that's a key and thing. We're going to have the rest of that report, and we're going to be talking to Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, who is at the border there in El Paso. He's the one who did the interview. He and Rob Dew are out there. We're going to talk to him about some additional revelations that they've learned about disease, about the CDC and their reaction to this immigration surge. But that point that he made right there, he said there's been violence and hardship and economic conditions for decades down there. What changed this suddenly? Well, of course, it's the catch and release program. It's the change in the policy from the Obama administration. This is something that is, as many Border Patrol agents have said, as they've seen their jobs change from law enforcement and border enforcement to essentially helping the people who come across, facilitating them to come 1,500 miles into the country, as Don Salazar's article on InfoWars points out. We're going to be right back from the border in El Paso with Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. Stay with us. 
chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. A few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Security alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We've let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theory. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of Patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. Man, when I get home from work, all Betty does is watch her reality TV and then she goes to sleep. I can take her on romantic dates, I get her flowers, you name it. She's just not the woman I married. Oh, Ralph, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? Are the honeymoon days of your relationship long gone? If so, consider this. The abundance of chemical additives, pesticides, BPA containers, contaminated tap water, and other toxic substances found in our environment. Experts know our bodies are some and being thrown off balance, especially when it comes to your natural systems. Forget synthetic chemicals. Super Female Vitality brings forward key herbs specifically chosen for women's biology without the use of phony additives. Get your bottle of Super Female Vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or call 1-888-253-3139. InfoWarsLife.com. Live life healthy. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. She's all alone. All alone. All alone in a time of need. Because he's racing and racing and plotting the course. He's fighting and fighting and riding on his horse. He's going the distance. Crashing through the lies and disinformation. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin, and I'm joined this segment by Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, who's on the border at El Paso. Now, we have an article that's read linked up on Infowars.com, where the Border Patrol says cartels are using de facto amnesty to smuggle, quote, whatever they want, unquote, in the United States. And this is an amazing interview. It's an exclusive interview that's up on Infowars.com. And we have Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. Joe Biggs, uh, you've got some updates to this as well. But first, I want to ask you about the morale of the Border Patrol agents. We've seen a lot of articles from them saying that morale, they actually tweeted out that morale was low, that they're, they've changed from law enforcement. They don't even talk about that anymore. Now they're concerned about preparing meals, changing diapers, transporting people into the interior of the United States, essentially just ignoring the laws that are on the books. How's their morale? Uh, right now, from what Stu Harris told us yesterday, the guy that's in the interview, he said it is the lowest. I mean, it is probably one of the worst jobs to have right now in the federal government. I mean, these guys are essentially being pulled off their duties to protect our borders and go out now and babysit these kids. They're doing paperwork and leaving these wide gaps open on our borders. I mean, they're out 
looking for jobs currently right now to go somewhere else because they don't want to deal with this anymore. Hang on right there. I want to go back and play part of that interview uh, where he talks about that. Let's let him tell the audience exactly how he feels. Go back. Let's play that clip. You know, a lot of what we're hearing in the media and other places is that, uh, you know, the conditions in Central America, economic, they're just horrible conditions. There's violence. There's gang violence. And that's true. And, you know, that, that's a, a terrible, terrible way to have to live. But that's been going on for more than 10 years. Okay. So for this invasion to start suddenly happening, something else had to change. And what changed was the fact that we were engaging in this catch and release program and word spreads fast and our, our agents are, are interviewing these people when they're being processed and one of the things they ask them so why come now uh, and the answer is 90 percent of the time because you're going to give me a permit or a, a permit they know they're going to be processed and released and they're free to go wherever they want to go in the united states and the likelihood of them ever showing up is you know for their court date slim to none and you know, even if they did show up for their court date, uh, what we're going to start seeing is what we call the anchor babies. Okay, because these court dates are being set, from what I understand, so far down the road. These people are going to come here, they're going to settle in, some of them are going to have children. Those children are now United States citizens. How is the judge going to deport these people if they have a United States uh, citizen as a child? He's not. Even if they did show up. So, that's a problem. I don't have an exact number on it. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say probably about 90% of these people, once they're here, they're here. And, and they're not going to go before an Im immigration judge knowing that they could be facing de deportation. Uh, we're, at, we're absolutely against amnesty. You know, it, it's, amnesty has been touted as, you know, we need to bring these people out of the shadows. And, well, that's all well and good. Um, but we shouldn't be let, letting them go into the shadows in the first place like we're doing right now. So uh, abs amnesty is not the answer. Well, it, it is a huge burden. Um, and I'm sure you, you know DHS has, has been rated one of the, the worst places to work in the federal government. And that's because of the morale issue. Now you pile a situation like this on top, you know, our agents are looking for jobs elsewhere. You know, some are ready to leave for go back to their hometown, their, work for their local police department. So it's, it's a huge burden. Uh, morale is, is the worst that it's ever been by far. And again, this situation has to be addressed. I, I know of at least one from our sector that, that transferred to another job. And I know more of our agents are, are looking. Right now, um, in places other than the Rio Grande Valley sector, uh, our agents are being pulled off the line in less than their 10-hour shifts because of the, the budget concerns. And so it's, it's exposing some areas. But we're starting to see what's happening in, in the Rio Grande Valley sector. We're starting to see that here. We've had upper, upwards of 70 people from Central America just turn themselves into the agents here. So it's, this is a Southwest border problem and it's also a problem for the United States because these people are going throughout the United States. It's hard to say. I mean, so you said it's, it's averaging about 100, 150 a day almost. Yeah, about about 100, 150 a day. That's that's about the best number I could I could put on it. You know, if it's if they do the right thing and, and start detaining these people and not catch and release like they are now, um, the, the the problem as far as the Central American or Central American invasion that, that's going on right now will stop. As we've seen it in the past, we've seen it, I think it was in 2004, we had a lot of people from Brazil that were coming in. Not at this magnitude, but that's what was happening here. And when we started detaining those people, it stopped. Uh, as far as how many people are, are getting biased that we don't know about, uh, I just don't know how you can put a number on something that you don't see or something that you can't physically count. Okay, that's uh, Stu Harris. He's the vice president of a local border patrol union there in El Paso. Interviewed by Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. Uh, uh, Joe, what is their concern about the people that are coming across? Well, the big thing is the, the use of these children, this humanitarian crisis beard to cover up what's really going on. The drug cartels are using these kids, funneling them in, all the attention's on them. Meanwhile, these big gaps are left open in these borders, and, you know, Chinese... A Pakistani, different people are now able to travel in in these gapped walls and smuggle drugs and terrorists. And, and that's a huge issue right now, he said.
Yeah, that's one of the things uh, in, in the headline. He says, we don't know who's coming in. We don't know what's coming in. Uh, there's, as you pointed out, they're using the idea that this is uh, all exclusively children as a beard, as a distraction, so that they can bring in people associated with the drug cartel.